So there's nothing much around the box. And I gotta say, here's why I disagree with this being called a smartwatch. I think this is more of a fitness band. But before that, you get the watch itself here, along with a start guide, and then the charger, which has two pins that are underneath here, so you can charge your watch. This is what the watch looks like. It's a very subtle, kind of a sophisticated look. The bands feel pretty cheap, almost like paper, but they do look nice though. The bands can actually be removed from the back here. Uh, there is this kind of button you kind of hold back, and then it comes off just like that. So you can replace it if there's anything wrong with it. So that's kind of nice to have. Now this does have motion to unlock, and it'll all automatically turn on like that. And this is what the, it looks like on my hand, so not bad at all. This kind of looks like it can be used for men or women, unisex. Uh, it's not too big, but it's not too small either. The bezels aren't too thick either as well. But there is no touch screen, remember that. There's only like this uh, home button that goes like next to each one. Or kind of like a next button, not a home button. And this takes you back home, the side button here. On the back is the heart rate monitor. And then you have these two pins to recharge the watch. But honestly, the charger that they, it came with isn't good at all because it's like whenever you try to charge, you have to have it at a certain angle locked in fairly well. And then you put it in and then you'll see that this will start flickering on top. There's like this little LED light that'll show up on there. To connect with your phone, first you gotta download this app called DA Fit. Once you get in there, it'll tell you to connect with your uh, watch for the first time on top here. And then uh, once you're connected, you'll be able to see it from here on out. And this is called the V11 smartwatch. It tells you the battery life on here, which is nice, but I wish it showed it on the watch itself because I can't find it anywhere here. And that's pretty unfortunate. I don't want to take my phone out every time just to see how much battery life is in here. But it seems like it does have a long battery life because I've been using this for about like two to three days with like light to moderate use, so nothing too crazy. So that's pretty nice, but this app is pretty useless to be honest because uh, it doesn't update anything on here. Uh, I remember I had more steps down there, uh, but it never really updated. I don't really care about the app too much as long as this is working and I can see it on here. That's the main thing. One other thing that might be a deal breaker besides not having a touch screen, and by the way, the screen isn't fully round, it's actually squared. It just looks fully round, but it kind of blends in well because there's not too much of a, there's not much like light. In the background, it's mostly dark. And here's an example of a notification tray working. So you do get notifications on this fitness band, so I give it props for having that at least. And it shows up on time immediately too, no problems whatsoever. But to navigate through, you click on this bottom button. This is the back button again here. So you can check your pedometer out. I don't know how accurate it is. Then there's a sleeper, and then you can check your heart rate. I actually thought the heart rate was a complete scam, a total ripoff and fake, because when I tried using it just on my shirt, it actually worked, but it only worked that one time, because whenever I tried it after that, it never worked. So yeah, I don't know exactly again how accurate that could be. I take it with a grain of salt. I can't really trust this thing, I guess. But either way, I mean, that's just how it is. That's how I see it. It could be accurate, I could be totally wrong. I'll have to, might have to test it out a little more. But just keep note, in a lot of these like cheap like fitness bands and smartwatches, like the heart rate monitor usually tends to be fake. Then we've got training, so you hold long press, and then you can check to see which one you want, if you wanna walk, if you wanna run. If we hold, it starts tracking it, and then uh, when you wanna go back, it'll keep you up to here. And then if you wanna try to stop this, you gotta hold this button again to pause it, and go ahead and hold it again to stop it, and then you gotta click the back button. A little more inconvenient than having a simple touch screen, but it is what it is. Probably the biggest gripe about the smartwatch I have, or smart band, or fitness band, whatever you wanna call it. Anyways, the next one shows you the, the weather, so that's kinda nice that it shows you that when it's connected to your phone, you can just see it on there. And then we have this messenger, but I guess it's not too well supported on my phone, but it does show you the notifications here. So, at least that much, and you can me measure your blood pressure. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Then there's shutter, so you long press this, and it takes a photo for you. The thing is, is that you have to be on the camera app to use this, so otherwise it won't randomly just work out of nowhere. And there's a long, there's a player, if you hold this, you can start playing music, hold it again, and it'll start playing for you. But you have to be playing music already in the background. It won't just stop, start automatically for you. So if I go into Amazon Music and play something really quickly, I don't want to get sued or copyrighted, so I'm just going to make this really quick. So if I hold this, okay, now it starts it, and then it stops it. And we can skip to, 
by pressing once and it'll skip it to the next track and I'll just play it again just so you know it's a new song but again that's that's a pretty big deal breaker for me like you know it's pretty annoying to be able to to have to hold this and tap it every time I'd rather just have a touch screen honestly I know some people won't mind it to each his own and then there's uh, there's settings here where you can switch the style. So there's three different styles. The first one I had is the best one in my opinion. So the current style I had was style two. Now this is style three if I go back and just show you. Now one thing I don't like about this style is that the second clock is bigger than the hour and minute hand. So that's kind of uh, weird, that's a little odd. So that's why I prefer the other one. It was more sophisticated and it showed the time. This is style one. Now there's a small wallpaper there along with it shows the time and date. So it's not bad either, I'll choose one or two. So if you click on this and hold it, it starts the stopwatch, and then you gotta hold it again to stop it. Now one major problem with that is of course, is that if you just tap it, it won't stop, but you have to hold it, so that'll take like another second. So mute was on the whole time. If you turn it off, it vibrates whenever you get a notification. I haven't heard of any sound coming through because I don't see a speaker anywhere, so that's just one thing right there. And then you click this to go to the next one. You can reset the whole thing, you can power off, and you can adjust the brightness too. So if we try to adjust the brightness here, let's see what we can get up to. So that's the brightest. It gets pretty bright. I'm not sure how well this that is to use outside in sunlight. It gets pretty dim too, so that's not bad. And then this is the QR code to get the app. But honestly, you can just look up the fit on, on, your, uh, on your phone to get it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the first look at the V11 smartwatch. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. As always, thanks for watching.